Good afternoon, everyone. And what we're looking at today are the graph of the two basic uh, trigonometric functions. We leave 10 out for now. So today we're looking at sine of x and cos of x and we're seeing what they look like, see how they work and see how they repeat themselves. Now, what I have on my CAS calculator is I have it set to radians. We are going to start doing everything in radians for the reason that if we start doing things in degrees, then we need to set our calculator numbers to much, much larger ones. So what I have there in blue is sine of x. To help visualize it on the graph, I have set the window in a particular way. So if you look here on this button here the with the arrows, I have it set up so that my x min and my x max are some amount more than two pi. I have selected five pi on two. So it's about two and a half pi. So it's just a little bit outside of what uh, two pi would normally show us. Uh, for my scale, I've set up as pi on four, just to help us uh, make the markings that we need. That's what the scale is for. And then for the Y min and Y max, I've set it up so that it is just minus two to two, so that we can see everything nice and on the screen. So what that means for this graph is if I start at zero, I have every single marking here is pi on four. That means it's eight markings to here, which means that this is zero to two pi. So zero to two pi, and then I have an extra pi on four, two pi on four, that's an extra pi on two either side. So the important thing to realize is that this graph is infinite. All right, so it has a domain of negative infinity to infinity. So that covers all real numbers. All right, this graph does not stop. It will keep repeating itself in the same way, in the same shape forever. All right. However, its range is restricted. All right, so we have here a minimum value of minus one and a maximum value of one. So the range would be from minus one to one. Now, what we can do is we can easily, because we have our calculator set up in such a way that we can easily count where these horizontal, sorry, vertical lines are, we know where the graphs minimum and maximums are. All right, so this is pi on four, this is two pi on four. So this is pi on two up here. We go across, we're back to zero, that's pi. 3 pi on 2 is down here, and that's negative, which makes sense considering what we know about how um, how the values of sine change as we move between the different quadrants. So if we think about this here, 0 to pi on 2, well, that's quadrant 1. They're positive. In quadrant 2, they're still positive, but in quadrant 3 and 4, they are negative. All right, so one of the important terminology that we need to think about is what's called the period of the function. And the period is how long it takes for the graph to start repeating itself. So the period of this graph of sine of x, how long before it starts to repeat itself? So it goes up, down, and then back to the center, at which point it starts going up down back up again so from here all the way up and down and back up again so where is that back here at what point does it start again and keep repeating itself all right so we can simply count how many markings we've got each marking is pi and four two pi and four four pi and four six pi and four eight pi and four so that's two pi all right so this this graph has a period of two pi. So by default, the graph of sine of x 
has a default period of two pi. And it has a minimum and maximum value, so a minimum of minus one and a maximum of one. All right, there is an extra word that we need to learn in here, which I'm going to add to the success criteria, the period and the amplitude. All right, so the period is how long it takes to repeat itself horizontally, but the amplitude is the distance from the center line. So for example, our function has a center line of y equals zero. Everything bounces around this. This is that this is our center line. The amplitude is the maximum is the highest distance from that center line. So in the case of this one here, the center line maximum distance is one. So it goes up to one and down to minus one. So we would say it has an amplitude of one. So the graph of sine of x by default looks something like this. Now I'm gonna turn on cos of x. Looks very similar, doesn't it? It's because it is the same general shape as sine of x. However, as you can tell, Instead of starting at zero like sine does, cos starts at one. This falls in with our exact values table where sine of zero is zero, but cos of zero is one. All right, they follow the same shape. These graphs currently have the same period and the same amplitude in that they both take two pi to start repeating themselves again. So I'm gonna turn off the blue for now and just look at the red. So it starts at a peak over here, it goes all the way down, all the way back up, and then starts, hits the top again, and then keeps repeating itself. Same thing over here, this is negative two pi, goes all the way down, all the way back up, and gets back to zero. So it repeats itself inside two pi. Now we can fiddle with the amplitude, we can fiddle with the period we can do translations, we can move them up and down, but those are something that we'll worry about later. Right now, I want us to be looking at the basic structure, how to draw them, how to get them on our CAS, and being able to identify things such as the period and the amplitude of the function. All right, so the work that goes with this is exercise 14G. All right, exercise 14G. All right, so once you see 14G and you have it up on your screen or in your book or whatever, uh, I will keep going. All right, so looking back at sine of X again, we are going to start putting some numbers into our CAS calculator to see how they change. If I put this slider in here, I now have a thing that controls my amplitude. All right, so I currently have an amplitude of one. So the number that goes out the front of your trig functions controls the amplitude. So in this case here, a is one, so it goes from zero to one or one, uh, zero to minus one. But I can stretch it more and more and more and more and more. But what you'll notice is that those intercepts do not change. Those intercepts always are the same. All that's changing is how far the graph stretches. Unlike when you're dealing with parabolas, 
they do not change. All right, I'm gonna put in here another one. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put it inside the sign value and I'm going to move it up and down and what you'll notice is as I increase it the graph gets more and more squashed together because what I'm doing here is I am changing the period of the function so that it it gets more and more frequent so generally what will normally happen is you will either get graphs that have fractional periods, which means that you are stretching it out even further away. So if I change my slide two, we'll set as a minimum of zero, we'll set as a maximum of, uh, so there's a maximum of 10 and each step uh, will be point, we'll change it to uh, point 0.1. All right, so as I shrink, as I shrink the value of B or change the value of B, the more I increase it, the more closer together everything gets, but the smaller it is going back to zero, the more, um, comp the more compressed or stretched it gets. So A stretches it up and down whereas B pulls it apart or pushes it together, like a spring. All right, it's the easiest way to think of it. B, controlling the period is like controlling the spring and making it look slightly different. All right, so there is a formula that goes with this stuff here. So, What we need to do is the value of B is actually like a, it's like an inverse thing. It changes the dilation. So what we do is we talk about it as being two pi on something. So in this case here, there has, it has a normal period of two pi, but if I change that to two, What's the period now? How much does the graph repeat itself at this point here? So it repeats itself. Remember each one of these is pi on four. That means it repeats itself inside one pi, uh, two pi on four, three pi on four, four pi on four. So because I've got the period here, the value of two, that means that my period is going to be two pi divided by that number. So if I change my graph a little bit more and I change it to three, now obviously my markings here aren't going to be perfect for it. So if I change my markings, if I change my scale from being pi on four to let's put in pi on three. Now, you can see my graph repeats itself in two pi and three instead. So when you are calculating the period, you look at the coefficient of X inside the trig function. And then, so it's two pi divided by that value that you've got there. Obviously when we're doing it in degrees, there's a slight difference in how it works. So yeah. Long story short, there is a little picture here to help you remember what's going on. Y yes, mate. Yes, that is absolutely correct. That's an excellent question. Yes, so X represents the angle that you're working with or what's changing and then the coefficient in this case, B is what's manipulating the period and A is manipulating the amplitude. So here is a little picture to go with it. This 
This is straight out of your textbook. So we have a sine of nt. So normally when we're talking about trig functions, because it's trig, we usually use t instead of x just to help us keep in mind that we are dealing with a circular function here. So it's a trig function. It is going to repeat itself. So a sine of nt, a is the amplitude and n manipulates the period. The period is two pi on n. So it could be, you know, we could stretch it out and have it be, well, n is 0.5. Well, that means the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 0.5, which is 4 pi. If the amplitude is negative, that's, that means that the graph, the A, the A value still controls how far it goes. But if you play with the function a little bit more, and you actually go and we actually make a negative. Watch what happens to the graph. It actually goes upside down. So the graph still has the same amplitude properties. It's just that it's now, instead of going up and then down, it's now going down and then up. All right, the period hasn't changed, the amplitude, the amplitude itself hasn't changed. It's just whether or not it starts going up or down at the start. All right, and the same thing that applies for the same thing applies to both. So if I change what's going on here, both A and B are linked to both graphs. Therefore, if I change one, I'm changing both. And as you can see, they do the same thing, the same properties.